let's get stuck right into this okay so I, again at Minotaur um, if you like the site it's called minotaur.com.au the books are pretty much the same as in a normal bookshop so you're probably not going to say very much but um, if you are a fantasy fan and stuff like that in Australia that is um, in Melbourne area even if you want it shipped over somewhere else they have some really awesome awesome things but anyway um, I picked up off the Halloween list that I'm oh no constructing I'm going to do this very slowly I picked up the hand um, the forest of hands and teeth and I also picked up the dead tossed waves now we took stickers off these ones and I will show you what I should not have done because now this looks like that it's bent it it's made it all yucky and sticky and the reason being um, because of this so I think I'm going to stick a label sticker there but it can be sorted out it's not too bad but I do very much love these covers Oh, they're by Carrie Ryan, but if you guys didn't know, but I'm pretty sure you guys have heard this a lot. And the Dead Toss Waves. Yes. Sorry about the slow intro. So I got both of these for my Halloween -y book list thingy. I'm going to stick that right on top of that one just in case. So I'm super excited about um, starting that soonish, maybe, if I get around to those books in the reading month. Then I picked up a book called Crazy as Chocolate. It's hard to face a future when you can't escape your past by Elizabeth Hyde. Pretty simple cover. I picked this up for four dollars and I'm going to read you the back. It says, when I went off to college I started telling people my, that my mother died in a car crash. Ellie and Izzy have lived a, a life with a mother they adored. Whether taking them for long midnight baths, Midnight bath or dancing in the dark in the rain, she's been a magical, colourful figure. Now, on the eve of her 41st birthday, Izzy realises that she's about to reach the year, the year her mother never got beyond. Her father and sister are flying out for an emotionally charged weekend visit, and Izzy can't help feeling that she's responsible, that there are apologies to be made. Surely now she's at an age where a grown up daughter can put things behind her. Crazy as Chocolate, like her best-selling novel, The Abortionist Daughter, dwells on the fragile yet binding relationship between a mother and her, and her daughters. It is enchant an enchanting novel about an idyllic wild childhood and two girls who, in spite of everything, love the woman who gave them life. And this book's a fairly short book, about 200 pages or so. So I really thought that it was going to be a, a good read. It sounded really interesting. Um, contemporary and sweet an adult book um, these are all mixed adult and stuff uh, and then I finally found another Siobhan Kerham book and it's been what hmm, I can't remember when I was in my teenage years you guys pretty much probably know if you have watched my channel that I love Frankie Says Relapse well I found Sweet F.A. Men Your Time Is Up and this is a about um, wives or football obsessed partners and sports. You know, the real manly guys, I guess you can say, like the typical typical manly guys that like football and sports and don't listen to their wives and shit like that. So, um, and I think it's about a, a band of women who get together and, yeah, a, or a band of wives who get together and, agree to take over the world or their husbands at least but anyway I can't really define it exactly but check it out I'm checking it out it's a fairly big book you know 300 pages or so I'll probably get that to uh, get to it next year sometime it's not high on my priority list to read but I do want to read it and I picked it up for five bucks so it's pretty cool then another one off my wish list is I'm so super excited about which I got for five dollars is Happiness Sold Separately by Lolly Winston and A Fight to Save a Marriage and A Fight to Save a Family. 
and if this isn't enough reason to pick up the book I don't know what it is it's just so simply stunning for me it's beautiful um, it says Eleanor Mackey has lived her life in perfect order college law school successful corporate career marriage but suddenly her world is falling apart in her late 30s she discovered that she and her podiatrist husband Ted can't have children when Eleanor withdraws from Ted into an interior world of heartbreak and anger Ted begins an affair with Gina, the, the nutritionist at their gym, a young woman with an oddball son who adores Ted. Meanwhile, Eleanor falls in love with the oak tree in her front yard, spreading out her sleeping bag to sleep under the stars. Lolly Winston's second novel looks beyond the manicured surface of suburbia into a world of lost longing, lust and betrayal. And I'm always fascinated with stories, I guess, of women who can't have children because it's pretty close to home and... Um, I just like reading about it I guess you know people who most people around me my age at the moment um, have already got kids four kids even at 20 and I'm 21 and I don't have any not that I regret it but sometimes it plays on my mind a bit and lots of health issues but I like reading stories like this it's cool and then I picked up a interesting book called Warrior Princess, Rhiannon of the Spring by Alan Freewin Jones. And this is another stunning, beautiful cover. I just I think that it's just so simply stunning. I believe this is a YA book. And it says you can be a warrior if you choose to be. It says Brandon's life is changed when forever when Saxon troops attack her homeland and kill her beloved brother. Bramwyn's impulse is to avenge his death. Instead, she is sent far away from the action, safe from harm's way, but surrounded by luxury and a new home. Bramwyn is restless at the stall of a warrior who fights to break free. Then a mythical woman in white foretells that Bramwyn will be the one to save her homeland. With no time to lose, Bramwyn must make the choice, continue in the path of her parents extended for, intended for her, or step into the role of a true warrior princess. And that's the book, the second book there. I think it's got a bigger picture of it at the back. Yeah, that looks really pretty too. So I thought for five dollars and it's book one, I'm gonna try it out because I'm kind of getting into fantasy in this area, trying to branch out and not read so many of the same books. Um, but I'm getting into it. Uh, I also bought the Game of Thrones. I do not have it because I got it on Kindle. So I started reading that and I was listening to the Kindle voice and it made me laugh so much. I'm not sure how I feel about the Kindle voice. It didn't really do anything for me. <laughs> so I'm a little iffy about that but I can't help it. Uh, it just reminds me of Microsoft Sam and he didn't, like you can't get that kind of, um, I don't know what the word is for it but it just, it, it read it too fast and there was no character differentiation. It was just weird, weird, weird. Anyway, I don't want this to go too long. So the next book I got is an adult book and it is Where the Truth Lies by Ro Rosemary Ingham. Well, these are brand new and this was $5 too. Um, it says, a sexual predator at large or an innocent teacher unfairly hand hounded. Um, I won't read the blurb, I don't think, but it is about a teacher, I believe, and another teacher, and um, how a, a teacher starts dating his, or getting into a sexual relationship with a student, and etc, etc. Um, it sounded interesting to me, and I think it's got, um, it's like a journal, like it's got passages of his journal as well or her journal I'm not quite sure I, I don't know a lot about this at all actually I don't know anything about it at all but it looked interesting so then I picked up um, Unholy Ghost book one of the down of the downside ghosts by Stacia Kane I believe it's called whoops sorry about that my partner came in and he was asking about dinner so yeah um, don't know too much about this book, but 
I've heard a lot about it, so that doesn't make much sense. But um, yeah, looking forward to getting into something a little bit different, I guess. Um, it's about hauntings, I guess, and ghosts, obviously. But um, yeah, looking forward to getting into it. And I think I saw this all the. I may have seen City of Ghosts or Unholy Magic. I'm not sure which one I saw. And I was about to pick it up, but didn't know yet. Don't know what it's going to be like yet. And lastly, I have uh, another random book that I picked up. It's called Poppy Shakespeare by Claire Allen. And it's Catch-22 meets one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Um, and I'll read the back. It says, says, Welcome to the Dorothy Fish, a hospital in North London. N has been a patient for 13 years. Day after day, she sits smoking in the common room and swapping medications like the other patients. Anne's own mission is never to be discharged. Never to be discharged. Danny walks Poppy Shakespeare in a short skirt and snake skin heels. Poppy is certain she isn't mentally ill and desperate to return to her life outside, and no baffled and agrees to help her. But in a world where everything's upside down, are they crazy enough to upset the system? And after reading, after watching one, whoever the cookies nest, which is a good movie, but really creepy for me. Um, yeah, I read the back, and I, I didn't even read the front cover, but I thought, hmm, this sounds very much like that. But it'll be interesting to read something like that. So I think that might be it this week for books, pretty much. Um, and then I have about 70 pages to go till I finish Fateful. I haven't been reading anything else except Fateful, uh, except the Vampire Academy, but um, because I've just been too tired and uh, we had family weekend and I had no time to read. So, yeah. So look out for that in the next coming days and I will catch you later.